Um, I read this poem. Uh, it's called Mr. Pate's Barbershop, which was written while I, while I was in college, um, or shortly thereafter. Mr. Pate was uh, my barber from age four up through uh, my sophomore, junior year in high school, and I was of that generation who um, came of age during uh, the social epidemic of crack. And so a number of my friends um, were, uh, who got involved in that uh, were either incarcerated or, God forbid, um, tragically killed. Um, Mr. Pate, while I was in college um, visiting him, would often tell a story about one of these kids. Um, and each time something, I could tell something was happening inside of him. Um, the other thing to know is that Mr. Pate, uh, we had this wonderful rumor, which is that he didn't throw hair away. The, the kids <laughs> spread this rumor that he didn't throw hair away. They swept it and kept it in little jars um, that he kept in the back of his shop. <laughs> Mr. Pate's Barber Shop. I remember the room in which he held a blade to my neck and scraped the dark hair as far as sting a jawline. Stacks of ebony's and jets, clippings of black boxers, Joe Fraser, Jimmy Young, Jack Johnson. The color television bolted to a ceiling like the one I watched all night in the waiting room at St. Joseph's while my cousin recovered from gunshots. I remember the old Coke machine, a water fountain by the door, how I drank the summer of 88 over and over from a paper cone cup and still could not quench my thirst. But this was the year funeral homes boomed, the year Mr. Pate swept his own shop for he had lost his best little helper to crossfire. He suffered like most barbers suffered, quietly, his clippers humming so loud he forgot Ali's lightning left jab, his love for angles, for carpentry, for baseball. He forgot everything and would never be the same. I remember the way the blade gleamed fierce in the fading light of dusk and the reflection of myself panned inside the razor's edge, wondering if I could lay down my pen close up my ledgers and my journals if I could undo my tie and take up barbering, where months on end a child's head would darken at my feet and bring with it the uncertainty of tomorrow. Or like Mr. Pate gathering clumps of fallen hair at the end of a day in short delicate wisps as though they were the fine findings of gold dust he deposit in a jar and place on a shelf only to return Saturdays, collecting as an antique dealer collects, growing tired but never forgetting someone has to cherish these tiny little heads.